So why culture? Very pertinent to the discussion to be having in today's day and age, specifically because just a few weeks ago we saw neo-Nazis and white supremacists openly marching in Charlottesville. We just had another officer acquitted for the shooting of an unarmed black man in St. Louis. And we have a president who not only believes that there's an African country called Nambia, but has gotten rid of DACA, is in a war of words with North Korea that could potentially lead to the next world war, and is hell-bent on building a wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Why culture is a very important discussion to be having at this very moment. And indeed, it is the impetus for the, insta, uh, the creation of the Providence Cultural Equity Initiative my attempts to balance my American Indian culture and heritage, along with my social justice efforts, along with my efforts to just empower the community as a whole to be more self-reliant and self-sufficient. So before we begin our discussion, we should probably start with an understanding of what culture is. And I say that because culture is such a dynamic element that I'm sure if I went around this room and asked each of you what culture is, I would get a different definition from you all. And if we're going to have a discussion, we need to be starting from a place of mutual understanding. We can start with a very academic definition of what culture is, which was proposed by Hofstede in 1997, where he said culture is the accumulation of knowledge, beliefs, values, religion, understanding of space, time, land ownership, whatever you may have that is acquired by groups of people over generations through individual and group striving. Very academic very verbose, and not a great elevator pitch, in my opinion. So let's see if we can whittle this down a little bit to find a definition that's a little bit more manageable for our discussion today. First of all, culture is expressed through music, and I personally have the opportunity to perform with the Eastern Medicine Singers, which is an Eastern Woodland, American Indian, Algonquian drum group that travels throughout the New England region and beyond, sharing our culture through our music, letting people know that the Eastern Woodland culture is alive and well. It's a great way to share the culture, and it's a great way to express it to let people know what your culture is and where it's at. Next, we can look at dance. And my mind goes to the Pereputra people in Michoacan, which is northwest of Mexico City in Mexico, who have this fantastic dance called the Dance of the Old Men. They dress in traditional Pereputra clothing, and of course, they wear masks that make them look like old men. What's great about this is that they invite the youth to be involved in it. So you not only get the youth involved in the culture, but you transfer it to future generations. And if you ever have the opportunity to see the dance, it's a great way to share it with the public because once you're watching it, you can't take your eyes away until it's finished. Of course, culture is also expressed in art. And it's said that society often influences art and art influences society. But what influences society? Culture, of course, the way that we are, the way that we become, the, our state of being. So art is definitely a great way of expressing culture. We can also look at history. And my mind goes to the Arawak people of the Caribbean, who, from a colonial historical perspective, are said to be wiped out. But if you ever have the opportunity to travel to the Caribbean, then you'll see the influences of the Arawak people everywhere. And you'll learn that, from a colonial historical perspective, the Arawak culture is alive and well and still influencing to this day. So definitely history can be expressed by culture. Next, we can look at heritage, and I'll take you back to Mexico and Michoacan, to the island of Henizio and Lake Pazcuaro, where they have a fantastic statue at the top of the island honoring Morelos, who was the liberator of Mexico from Spain. And the story goes that when he was on the run from the Spanish government, he went to the island, and as is the way of indigenous people, they hid and protected him. So, to honor this role that they played in the liberation of Mexico, they have erected a statue there on the top of the island, and this is a tremendous example of how culture can be expressed through heritage. We can stay on the island and talk about how food expresses culture. And on Inizio, they have this very unique delicacy called choros, which are the small fish that they catch in the lake around, that they roll in flour, and they fry whole, and then they eat them like they're french fries. Very unique, very specific, and another great example of how culture can be expressed through food. And then lastly, we can talk about traditions. And if you're talking about here in the Northeast, then you're definitely talking about the powwow, which is actually a derivative of the Nahigansett word for our medicine man, which is our powwow. He used to go and bless the circle before all of the dancers would come out to dance, and this became known as the powwow, 
But what's great about traditions is you can create new ones. And we do this in particular by our fire torch honoring ceremony, which we collaborate with Water Fire Providence on from time to time to not only honor indigenous leaders from the local community, but leaders from the community as a whole. So ultimately, when we're talking about culture, we're talking about the way things are done by specific groups of people and the reasons why they do them. Much better elevator pitch if I do say so myself. So we understand what culture is. Let's look at why culture is important. And for this, we can look at the World Commission on Culture and Development, our Creative Diversity Report, the summary version of July 1996, where they came to three conclusions. First, that culture influences all of our way of thinking, behaving, and imagining that for societies and groups, culture is energy, empowerment, inspiration, knowledge, and acknowledgement of diversity, and also the fact that political and economic rights cannot be realized outside of social and cultural. So ultimately, why is culture important? Because it impacts every aspect of our livelihood. So we understand what culture is, we understand why it's important, Let's look at some of the benefits of culture. And because we live in a dollars and cents world, let's look at the fact that culture is a tremendous economic driver. Now, how do we know this? Because there's this thing called cultural tourism. And what is cultural tourism? Well, it's 78% of all visitors to the US on an annual basis, about 118 million visitors per year. These cultural tourists stay longer and spend about 36% more during their stays to the tune of about $1,319 per visit or $192 billion annually to the U.S. economy. So when you're talking culture, you're definitely talking an economic driver. We can next look at the fact that culture supports and enhances all other sectors. Why? Well, because cultural tourists are looking for a very specific and unique uh, experience when they travel, but of course, to have this experience, they have to travel. So they're supporting the travel industry. When they get to their destination, they need a place to stay. So they're supporting the hospitality industry. And of course, we got to eat, right? So they're also supporting the food and beverage industry. And we know this because UNESCO has designated several hundred designations around the world as World Heritage of Humanity sites that uh, get millions of cultural tourists to visit them on an annual basis, once again, contributing to all of these other sectors in our economy. Next, we can take a look at the City of Philadelphia's Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Community. They're everyone's rights to art and culture discussion, where they focused on two things. First, what is the negative impact on communities when they do not have access to arts and culture resources? And secondly, what steps can be taken to promote more cultural equity in their community? And they came to two conclusions. First, that communities with lower socioeconomic statuses that have access to higher levels of uh, cultural resources have greater social well-being outcomes. And secondly, that it is in the interest of the public sector as a whole to have greater access for everyone to cultural resources. So ultimately, the benefit is that exposure to cultural diversity assists in the overall social well-being of a community and its members. Next, a very important one, we can look at the fact that culture mitigates against racism. Now, how do we know this? Well, because it honors unique cultural distinctions, because it builds bridges of understanding, and because it promotes relationship building and mutual respect. Now, those are big claims, right? How do we substantiate that? Well, let's take a look at the relationship of the American Indian to the Irishman to the Englishman. Now, from a cultural perspective, the American Indian and the Irishman have so many things in common. Tribal communities, uh, warriors, clans, chiefs, and both colonized by the English. So from a cultural perspective, you would think that the Indian would get together with the Irishman and say, hey, Englishman, we don't appreciate what you did to us. We're standing together now. We're going to make sure this doesn't happen to us ever again. But of course, we live in a racial society, right? So in a racial society, the Irishman becomes white along with the Englishman. The Indian becomes colored or black, and the Indian and the Irishman never get together. Culture has a way of breaking down those barriers, and it's a great way to mitigate against racism. Next, we can look at the fact that culture creates a very unique narrative. My mind goes back to Mexico once again, to Santa Clara, which is in Michoacan, which is the copper capital of Mexico. And not only can you go there and get some of the most exquisite, high quality and unique copper craftsmanship you've ever seen in your life, but you can also visit the National Museum of Copper to learn about the rich heritage of uh, copper in Mexico and also see some of the fantastic traditional forms of making copper. Once again, very specific and unique to Santa Clara and a great example of how culture creates a very unique narrative for the place where it's based. 
And then lastly, culture instills personal pride and belonging. And why do I say this? Well, because whether you're Laotian, American Indian, or Liberian from West Africa, everyone has one. So everyone can have personal pride and everyone can feel a sense of belonging based upon the culture that they come from. So let's recap briefly. Culture is a tremendous economic driver. It supports and enhances all other sectors. It increases social well-being outcomes. It mitigates against racism. It creates a very unique narrative and it instills personal pride and belonging. So in my opinion, rather than having a conversation entitled why culture, we should really be having a conversation entitled why not culture. And with that being said, in spirit, from the top of the Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan outside of Mexico City, in the accompaniment of my lovely wife, I say unto you all, Akwani, Katapatus Wuchia Chusuta, Kapish Kanash, which is to say, peace be unto you. Thank you for listening to me, and I hope to see you all soon. I hope. <laughs>